Hello, hello, hello guys, and welcome back to Joe's Ventures, and today we're doing an episode of a game called Paperback, which is about a cute little wombat trying to find a little home for him. And a lot of people have been playing this recently. This game came out about uh, early tw uh, 20, uh, late 2018, I mean, and a lot of people have been playing this recently to help support uh, a lot of charities and stuff for the Australian big wildfires that have been happening. And these fires are just devastating to the local people and the local wildlife. There's been about 15 million acres burned, along with, uh, I think, about 20 or 30 deaths now, which is obviously horrific, and it's been burning, killed over a billion animals, believed to be, just because they couldn't escape these huge wildfires. So there's a humble bundle that comes with this game and a bunch of others. We can get $400 worth of games for about 25 bucks, and... If, and 100% of the proceeds of that will go to uh, charities that are trying and and places that will try and help people and animals deal with these fires and help them recover. But what I'm also going to do is that if you don't want to buy the bundle, I'm going to link a few charities in the description that you can go and donate if you would like to give uh, some support to the, the people trying to fix it and help people with these wildfires. But if you guys just want to watch this video and maybe even spin it around, that get someone else to donate. That's all it really needs. So just try and get as much support for those people that are dealing with it and those animals that are dealing with these horrific fires and try and get them to support. So we're going to start playing the game now. Carry on with the story. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land of which we are meeting. We pay our respects to the elders past and present. I assume that's something for the aboriginals. Ooh, let's paint this. Ooh. From deep in the soil to the tops of the trees, the Australian bush teems with plant and animal life. Yeah, it does. Look at all that beautiful wildlife and plants. More painting to do. Winter rain and warm spring days encourage growth throughout the bush. Is it very rinse? But as summer progresses, the land bakes under the relentless sun. Oh no. Chapter one. The paper bark tree. Oh, let's see where we collect. <laughs> Isn't that cute? There is a wombat who lives under a paper bark tree. Oh. We're too fat. We're too chunky. Make our way over here. Now wombats are pretty cool. Let's see what. Let's see. Make our way through here. Now wombats are a group of animals that are called marsupials, which are a group of mammals. I think there's about 400 to 500 species of them, which are uh, known for having pouches instead of. Like, Instead of being like a placental mammal and like having an umbilical cord and a placenta and keeping their babies inside them until they're born, marsupials tend to be, give birth quite early. So when their babies are still pretty much a fetus, they'll crawl out of the mother and into her pouch where they will latch onto one of her nipples and they'll until they grow big enough to leave the pouch. So it's just like a little extra step and they're quite common around uh, South America and Australia. With in Australia, they're pretty dominant. They're pretty much one of the. We're gonna make our way back here and see if we missed any collectibles. Because we want to collect as much as we can on our way through here. We're gonna take our time and enjoy the game. Got them around here. Apparently, I believe this was originally made for an app, but I released it on Steam as well, which is quite fun. 
I like this game so far. Quite cute. Is there a party people too? The wombats are little herbivores, so they can go around and eat grass and do their thing. But we even got some here. back and be like, oh you missed that cicada you dummy. Let's make our way around here. So we're painting the landscape. Oh there's a cicada. Oh some things over there. Oh some deep. are quite cute little birds. There's a few different species of them. It's quite hard to tell just from the model here. It could be whatever species. Fallen logs are no match for this hungry wombat. They're quite small. They go around hunting a lot of flying insects. That's just what they do. Let's see if we can put that in. Look at all what we got here. We got uh, looks like some cockatoos, cicadas, some sort of raven, maybe a magpie, another cockatoo. Look at these cute little bugs. They might be a they get quite small too, they are like 10 grams. Quite small little birds. Found all across the west coast of Australia. No, not west, east. Never eat soggy wick, but that's a good way to remember you north, south, east, west. Let's see what else we can find down through here. Look at that. That's that's actually wombat poos. Wombats are the only animal known to poo square poos, which is really weird. Might be because of fiber. We literally have no idea why it's square. There's another one there. square poops might be because of fiber it could be a lot of things I'm gonna have through here pop out here they don't like us Oops. what else to get oh, yeah so that we're making epic progress Let's see if we make our way over here oh. Oh. can't really go that way by the looks of it And wombats are known for being little diggers and make a little complex. They're actually so well adapted for it that they their pouch actually face unlike a kangaroo which faces forward, they face backwards, which means that when they're digging, their babies don't get a face full of dirt. And you can often see when there's a diprotodon, oh, diprotodont. A lot of reconstructions of like diprotodon, one of their giant relatives, they often have their little baby sticking out, and it's quite cute. You can even see pictures of little wombats with it. It's adorable. I don't know which species this is, but there's three different species. There's one that's critically endangered, the northern hairy nose wombat. And, uh... There's the common wombat and the southern wombat, I think. The, the fairy wrens. The wombat wrens. does not notice the little fairy wrens. But the fairy wrens definitely notice the wombat. 
Look at those little nests, isn't it quite cute? Most like to come out at night and do their thing, come and eat. The wetlands. The wombat will eat when it's hungry, it's regardless of skin. who is in the way. <laughs> Look our way. Cute little blue tongue. I'm sure we got the sticker for the... Oh, no, we don't want to go to the menu. We want to carry on. I wanted to see what we've got. Continue. We'll carry on doing our thing. Start again. Oh no, we just start from the chapter. The wetlands. I was sort of worried about that. I was like, oh, I don't want to start that again. It won't take long. The wombat will eat when it's hungry, regardless of who is in the way. <laughs> a little blue tongue. I quite like blue tongue skinks. They usually do blue tongues, obviously. They stick them out to look dangerous. Because usually colours, like bright colours like blue. Now, see what I'm going to check in the library. Look, yeah, we've got very in. They'll often try to stick them out to look... Uh, dangerous or venomous because a lot of animals that are bright colors like red or blue are venomous so it's like a universal code in nature for being dangerous so they stick their tongue out and use it to scare predators but they're not that dangerous they're from the genus Tukila, which is like the largest uh, genus of sphinx not largest in terms of numbers but in size they are closely related to things like shinglebacks and coming in skinks. And skinks are a really interesting group of uh, reptiles just because there's so many of them. There's like 1500 different species of skink from all around the world. From Australia to America. Pretty much everywhere you can find skinks. This, and part of the reason there's so many species is just because of the uh, a lot of them are isolated on islands. Like New Zealand has like. Uh, quite a few different species of skinks just because there's not many other types of lizard other than geckos. They're just so easy uh, for them to move across islands. Which way are we going? We've already been this way. We've <laughs> lost! Oh no! One bat, more like gone bat. We can't go that way. Let's carry on this way then. Uh, yucky mud. Are we hungry? Have we been feeding? Oh, gotta jump over there. There's a little skink. We gotta break through. Oh, we're tough and dangerous. You don't want to mess with us. There's a screen goes. The spoonbills are not startled by the wandering wombat. I don't care, we're too tough. I wanna collect the A sticker for the skink. There's a cicada. There's another screwball. Yeah. 
going through the wetlands, doing our thing. There's another cicada. <laughs> oh, speed ball. Hungry, hungry, hungry. Now we're just chilling, doing our thing. Here we are. Cute. The wombat enjoys a good scratch before <laughs> moving on in search of more food. Oh, we don't chapter two. We didn't get the skink, but that's okay. The river birds. What are the river birds doing? I'm gonna click this butterflies now. Uh, dragonflies, I mean. A hot, dry wind ruffles the wombat's fur and whispers a warning to the birds. The black cockatoo there. <laughs> There's a lot of different species of uh, black cockatoo. One of my favorite is the largest of the group, which are black uh, palm cockatoos. They're the biggest cockatoos in the in the world. They get to pretty big sizes. I think they're about uh, 1.3 meters, which is pretty big. Almost like as big as some macaws and such. Another looks like a magpie, some sort of corvid. Yeah, they can get pretty big. We're doing our thing, no one can mess with us. Quite cute. Can go that way and the will balance it. Crawling across the river like a true wombat. Three more. See, and also these fairy ones. You can see the uh, duller ones are the females, and the brighter blue ones are the males. That's a good example of sexual dimorphism, which means uh, there's a difference between the sexes. Ooh. There's another that palm cockatoo. Smoke and ash tickle the wombat's nose. Uh oh. We're getting to a bushfire. Wombat watches the birds fly away. It too needs to find somewhere safe from the flames. Check the food. Well, now we're getting a bit dangerous now. Oh, four. The bushfire. Fire advances hard and fast. The wombat must find shelter. Oh no, oh, no. I'm gonna make a run away. One thing about uh, bushfires is that bushfires are a natural part of the ecosystems in that, uh, like the Australia bush, because a lot of the once the fire goes through, 
because all of the ashy soil and ash that's left over is very nutrient rich, which really helps a lot of plants uh, easily grow back, like even like eucalyptus trees and not just eucalyptus trees, but also uh, pine trees are specifically built to like germinate after fires. So they're very important for helping bring new and healthy growth into the ecosystem. But the thing is, we can't even go that way. That's weird. The thing is that these fires burning up 15 million acres and killing a billion animals is just at a scale that's not, that nature's not ready for. She's just not ready for it. Way to even go, I don't know why. Let's just keep going this way. Like these, this is all be because of climate change, because we're releasing too much carbon into the atmosphere, which is messing with the temperatures and the weathers. Yeah. Which sucks. It really does. It sucks. Terrible. And it's because we're doing it for agriculture, not just agriculture, uh, power, fossil fuels, all that burning, releases carbon to the atmosphere, which gets trapped in the atmosphere, which also means the, the seasons will become a lot more erratic and they're causing these huge fires. Like, this last decade is believed to be the hottest decade on record. Like hotter than any other year, uh, any other decade that's been recorded since we started recording things back in 1800s, which sucks. Oh. The wombat cannot see or smell its way through the thick smoke. And with these extreme weather, it's going to cause more fires like this, more extreme monsoons, and just generally just a lot of a harder uh, time. It'll be more expensive for all of us. We have to pay and for the da uh, damages and have to build back from these extreme, more extreme disasters now that the seasons are becoming more erratic. And these big fires, look, it's already taken the lives of 30, 40, uh, I'm not sure the exact number, but I believe over 20, over 20 people definitely. And the thing is that As the government's. Hope, the wombat digs, the earth will protect it from the flames. The governments of the world aren't really doing enough to try and protect us from these climate change uh, effects. The real thing we need to do is try and cut down as much as you can on your carbon emissions. That's the only real way that's going to help make an impact and save us from these more extre this extreme weather. We're what, literally watching climate change happen. And it's sad to think that we are causing these extreme weather patterns. Which sucks. It really does. All the fuel, fossil fuels, all the, all our cars. Basically our society is founded upon fossil cool fuels, change. which is hard. Ooh, cool change. Cool raindrops sizzle as they hit the hot ash. It is safe now to leave the burrow. Mm. At least with these uh, these animals, and especially in the Australia bush, are sort of adapted to deal with wildfires since that's the most natural part. It's just fires of this magnitude will be very hard to recover from. And it's already affected a lot of people as well. People getting burned trying to save these to stop these fires. It's really just affected everyone in Australia, so... The best things we can do against climate change is just generally try and reduce your carbon footprint. Like reduce reuse recycle, try and keep your... Like even if you just like put your thermostats or your heat pumps about 30 degrees cooler in the winter... Uh, not 30 degrees, uh, 2 degrees cooler in the winter... Uh, warm, uh, cooler in the winter and two degrees warmer in the uh, in the summer. We'll just that will stop 30 million gigatons of 
we all did that, it would just keep so much carbon out of the atmosphere. Which will help reduce the effect of climate change. Like, all of us just doing little things like that would really just stop a lot of carbon from getting to the atmosphere. We're also burning down... One of the other things we could also do is try and switch to more renewable energies like solar, wind, even nuclear. But we should also try to... Eat less meat could be another thing. It's If you do your research on it, I could even leave a link to some... Uh, do some ways, uh, leaving to the site where you can read up on some ways that you can help reduce your impact on the environment with uh, your carbon emissions. And any little bit helps. Like if a little, if a lot of us do a little bit, that means a lot. And also try and persuade the governments to try and reduce our carbon footprint. That's really the best we can do. But if enough people talk about it, enough people are not denying it, like a lot of these climate change deniers. We get educated on it. Turn on the best. Now that's a sulfur crested cockatoo. The cockatoos sift through the ash for seeds, while the wombat searches for unburnt grasses. Sulfur crested cockatoos are pretty cool. They don't like us. That's sad. We're just a cute little wombat having adventures. Oh, we're back into <laughs> Is that a bug? Ah, oh, I think we might be bugging out a little bit now. But yeah, we can fix that now. More yeah, cockatoos just showing. We at least we have an idea of how nature will recover. Nature always recovers, and all of these animals are adapted to deal with some degree of wildfires. But it's just reaching a point where we've seen nothing like this, pretty much in the past century or so. Just a lot of a lot of land, 15 million hectares, is being burned. So very hard for nature to recover from that much land being lost. Oh. I don't like this going down that way. Oh, must have clipped out. There we are. I hate it when I do that. There's no cicada. Another moth too. Got two more to collect. Yeah, climate change is a real issue. It's going to affect all of us. And we can already see the effects happening now with a record... A record uh, high decade. Like 2016, I think, was the hottest year on record ever. And uh, 2019 was the next runner up. So it's very dangerous to think that how much is going to be affected by. Eventually, the land will recover and the plants will regrow. Mm. In the meantime, the wombat needs a new home. We mm. make our way. Oh. And now we're getting into the. See, look, all the new growth areas that haven't been affected. But yeah, if you feel like you, if you have the money, or if you just want to help the wombats and the koalas and all the other Australian wildlife, and the people that have been affected by this disaster, to try and make you, to donate if you can, or at least give out your wishes and such. Spread awareness at least. Getting the word out is the most important, I would say. The wombat smells fresh grass just on the other side of the fence. Oh, cool. Oh, 
Look at that. Ooh, we got another sticker. Yeah. We're quite a cute little wombat, aren't we? I like wombats. We've got some. Can we go this way or not? No, we can't. Making our way downtown, walking fast. <laughs> the man of my home now. <laughs> we don't get the rider for that. Ooh, gotta climb up this log. See some tracks. Looks like someone's made a big vehicle. So here, ooh. remember Jack. Oh, there's a tap there. Another cicada. This is one of those games that you can play for a little bit, but if you want to go collect some stuff, you could really spend a good amount of time just going around looking for stuff. It's quite fun. Nice and relaxing too, really just need a point and click. Don't really need to go too adventurous with this. Oh look now we're coming around to it. Going to someone's fence. Oh there's a kookaburra! One of the largest kingfishers, the believe it or not. Is tired from the long journey. One of the largest species of uh, kingfishers, which are a group of little birdies that uh, like to eat all these little fishies and such, they live and dive down to catch fish, but kookaburras are weird, they'll even eat little skinks and such, pretty much eat whatever they can get their beaks on, and they make that famous, you know, they're famous, I'm not, I'm not good at doing kookaburra impersonations, but they make that kind of sound, if you hear a stereotypical Australian bird, it's probably the kookaburra, because it's got its, that's how God's named the laughing kookaburra. Ooh. What are we doing now? Sleeping on someone's homestead. Let's keep sleepy sleep. It is safe here. It is safe here, hopefully. This is home. Hmm. I don't think this game should encourage letting wombats living their people just because they could spread diseases and such. But they're not too dangerous, uh, at least. Very cute little animals. Oh, well, let's see this make with love. It's a paper house by Melbourne, Australia. All these different people. I'll have a look quickly through them. Should thank every one of them for making this game and have a look at all these different <laughs> frog. Commercial art, QA testers. All the stuff that they need to make a game. People out inspired by the looks of it. It's pretty awesome. Films Victoria. League of Geeks. Red Unity. That's pretty awesome. Back to the menu. Look at that wombat shutting his stuff. Okay, so now that we're done with that, I really hope you guys either buy the bundle or donate to one of the charities I'll link in the description. And hopefully you guys like and subscribe and bye bye.